Hi everyone, it's Matt here from pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass your pilot exams in half the time. So let's have a look at how to use memory techniques to really lock in what we're learning and maximize the benefit that we get out of our study time. Now by the end of this video, this is what you're going to learn, okay? You're basically going to learn how to chunk, um, how to break things into segments, use combinations of verbal and visual, saying it at the power of saying it out loud, say it out loud, say it out loud, which is so powerful. How to associate things um, with things we already know and put things in context and then give them a story to assist in your memory. So let's go back up the top and let's take a bit of a look. So let me show you quickly the power of chunking. Now I don't want to go over this for too long because it's in some of the other videos, but basically there's three things. I want you to try and remember them. Paper, cookie jar, shirt. Okay, test yourself. You can pause this video at any time. You should have got paper, cookie jar, shirt. Now that's really easy to remember because it's only three items, which is so easy for our brain to remember. But the moment we go to five, it becomes more difficult. When we go to six, it becomes way more difficult. So let's have a look at these five. Box, paperclip, water, candle, pothole. Okay, I want you to try and recall them. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, box, paperclip, water, candle, pothole. How'd you go? Now, most people would have easily got four, but may, some may have struggled with the fifth. Now, what I want to do is I want to, I've got a list of 12 here, but I'm only going to show you six because I want you to see how much harder it is to memorize six. Keys, bed, tweezers, toenail, mirror, doll. Okay, pause the video and try and recall them. So a lot of people would have really started to struggle with that, and most people probably only got five. Okay, now let's have a look at a big list. So now we've got 12. Keys, bed, tweezer, toenail, mirror, doll, bottle cap, balloon, puddle, soap, nest, goat. Okay, pause the video and see how many you can recall. Okay, press play. Now, most people probably still only got around about five or six, even though there was 12 items to remember. Some really good people with really good memory techniques already might have got more. But let me show you how easy it is when we chunk it down. Okay, so let's do it in groups of three because we know our brain can really handle three really easy. Keys, bed, tweezers. Keys, bed, tweezers. Okay. What was it? Keys, bed, tweezers. Okay, let's do the next three, just the next three. Toenail, mirror, doll. Toenail, mirror, doll. What is it? Toenail, mirror, doll. Let's do the next three. Bottle cap, balloon, puddle. Bottle cap, balloon, puddle. Bottle cap, balloon, puddle. And let's do the next three. Soap, nest, goat. Soap, nest, goat. Now, that's how we can chunk it down. We can break these big lists into small, easy to manage chunks of three or four, whichever suits you best. Okay, and then all you've got to do is remember the if what if you, especially if you say it in a rhythmic type pattern like keys, bed, tweezers, keys, bed, tweezers, keys, bed, tweezers. All you've got to remember is K, the first letter, or the first one, and now you'll remember that. Keys, bed, tweezers, keys, bed, tweezers. And that's what you do is you just go through for all of those and you get them into manageable sized chunks. And you'll be able to commit that to memory really quick. So you can pause this video and try that at any stage you want or come back and do it. Okay, let's move on. Now, it's much easier when we chunk related information. So, apple, pear, orange, plum. Very easy to remember because it's four and they're all fruits. Okay, what were they? Apple, pear, orange, plum. Now, let me show you how organizing lists can actually make it easier. So over here, what we've got is berries. And I want you to remember these four berries. Strawberry, blueberry, cranberry, blackberry. Strawberry, blueberry, cranberry, blackberry. 
But we can make that even easier to remember if we organize it. So if we organized it into, say, alphabetical order or alphabetical and then color. Or, say, let's have a look at this. So I've organized the, if we just remember, all the back part of the word is the same, the berry. So then we've got crayon, straw, blue, and black. Now I've got the two colored berries last, and the other two I've organized into alphabetical order. And that's all I need to remember. And then I'll remember that, and I'll even be able to remember the order it's in. So watch this. Cranberry, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry. Okay, it's in alphabetical, and then it's in color with alphabetical. Okay, now I want you to recall that knowing that. So it was alphabetical, and then it was color with alphabetical. Now, whereas when they're in some sort of random order, the order is much harder to remember. And the bigger that list gets, the harder it will get if there's no order to it. Whereas the bigger that list gets, it's going to be reasonably easy to remember as long as there's still a very logical order to it. So not only chunk your information, but give it logical and sequential order like we're used to remembering. For example, we can remember bit that they all end in berry. That's very easy. Okay, these are all berries, so easy to remember. These are all fruits, easy to remember. Okay, once we give it order, easy to remember because our brain is used to storing it that way. Okay, right, so let's have a look at the two type, main types of memory. The main types of memory are verbal and visual. So verbal is like listening to things or just reading things. Visual means seeing pictures or creating visual concepts in your own mind about them. Visual is way, way, way more powerful. But even more powerful than visual is when we combine the two. So let's take a look and see. So I'm going to read you a list of words and I want you to try and memorize these just from verbal input. And see how many you get. Keys, bed, tweezers, mirror, doll, balloon, puddle, soap, nest, goat. Okay, how many can you recall? Okay, most people probably only recall three, maybe four, because verbal on its own is not very powerful. But once we add verbal and a bit of visual, it becomes more powerful. So this time I want you to remember them as I add, say them, and you can see them. Keys, bed, tweezers, mirror, doll, balloon, puddle, soap, nest, goat. How many can you recall? Pause the video. Okay, so having the words there just visually, you would have been able to recall even more. Now what I want you to do this time, I'm going to show you the words again, and this time what I want you to do is actually visualize that thing. So listen to the word and then visualize it. So the first one we know is keys. So I want you to visualize a set of car or house keys. And when we get to goat, I want you to visualize a goat. Okay, so as I say each thing, I want you to picture that in your head. Keys. Bed. Tweezers. Mirror. Doll. Balloon. Puddle. Soap. Nest. Goat. Now I want to pause the video and see how many you can recall this time. Okay, you should have went way better. Now that's introducing you to the concept of visualization. So you don't always need a picture in your notes to be able to remember things. You can create pictures in your own head to help you remember stuff. Okay, so behind this one, I actually have a bunch of pictures for you. And I'm going to show you how much more powerful it is when we actually have real pictures as well. So sometimes you'll want to get as many, as much visual content you, as you can for your study, or you'll want to remember the pictures or draw them up yourself in your notes. Okay, and this is why mind maps and other things like that can be very, very powerful. So let's take a look. Scooter. Tree. Keys, car, bed, castle, 
banana train dog okay pause the video and see how many you can remember okay welcome back so now what I want you to do is we're going to use a little tiny bit of association so this time what I want you to do is not only remember what's behind each one but where it is roughly where it is and that will actually help you remember so let's take a look scooter tree keys car bed castle banana train dog okay so take a moment and try and see how many you can remember based on where they were pause the video if you need to okay welcome back let's take a look okay so there's the items now just by knowing where they were it probably helped you okay so let's see how we can use association even more powerfully this time I've got nine items for you and I want you to remember these nine items okay pause the video if you need to and see how many you can remember okay welcome back now how many did you remember let's say it was four or five now let me tell you that they're all related to an airport and I want you to picture them how they relate to an airport where you might place them in your head around an airport if you had to put all those all into one picture and draw a picture of an airport where would you put them and I want you to picture that in your head right now okay now I want you to see how many you can recall pause the video if you need to okay welcome back there's the nine how many did you get I guarantee most of you would have got way more that time because you had a visual picture in your head and you associated them with where they would lay out around an airport okay so let's see that even more powerfully of those nine items there are five ground-based items and there are four airborne items the sun the cloud the helicopter and the plane and there are five down the bottom so they all relate to an airport they're all related four of them are related to being in the air and five we're chunking here five are related to being on the ground now how many can you remember pause the video if you need to okay so as we're giving it more context and more association with things we know we're finding it far easier to memorize so let's take a look down here and let's do some really in-depth association let's associate it not only with an airport that we're sort of familiar with but let's now associate it with a story as well okay so you and I are sitting in this airplane I'm the pilot and you're my co-pilot we've gone right to the very end of the runway ready to do a short field takeoff and we're in, we're a beam the uh, terminal building right at the very end of the runway and the reason we've gone all the way out there is because we have to clear these trees and this high-rise building that are right at the end of the runway now we'd like to turn right but we can't because there's there's other buildings and high rises and things to the right that we can't see we'd also like to turn left to go around that building but we can't because there's high voltage power lines just to the left so we really have to do these calculations we have to be sure that we can do them properly before we go now because it's such a really hot day the storm clouds are starting to billow and that's starting to worry us as well because we have to clear this building and we have to avoid these storm clouds that are sitting out to the left and before we go we have to wait for an inbound helicopter to come in over the terminal building and land okay 
So that's our story that we're going to associate our nine items at our airport with. Let me race you through that story again. You and I are sitting in the aircraft doing our calculations. We've gone right to the end of the runway because we have to clear the trees in the building. We can't turn left. We can't turn right. The left has the power lines. The right has buildings. The storm clouds to the left we need to avoid that are billowing up because it's such a hot day. And as soon as that helicopter is in and landed over the terminal building, we'll be given clearance. Okay, I want you to try it now and see how many you can remember. Pause the video if you need to and then come back. Okay, so welcome back. That time you should have found it really, really easy. Okay, now when you're doing this, also say them out loud. Don't just sit there and say, you know, you know, create this story and just listen passively. You want to actually either physically draw this on paper as you're learning stuff or you, and or say it out loud. The more combinations of all these things that I'm giving you, the more powerful it is for your memory. So for example, if you chunk it down, if you put it in ordered lists, if you say it out loud, if you create stories to go with it, and if you do it multiple times, then it all, it's all going to become very, very uh, powerful memory techniques. So let's summarize. Chunk your study into maximum um, concepts of five to seven at a time. Sort items into familiar categories or, or orders. Our brain is used to that. We want to use them wherever possible. Okay, when you have big lists, break them into small segments. Use combinations of verbal and visual and combine as many of these strategies as you can. Say it out loud, say it out loud, say it out loud. Saying things out loud shifts things to your memory. It uses a whole different part of your brain, which reinforces your memory. Okay, and the fact that you're seeing it, hearing it, saying it, and probably reading it, is incredibly an incredible powerful combination. Associate information with things we already know. So if, for example, if you ride motorbikes and you know, you know, that the wind speed gets really strong the faster you go, or you lift your head on a certain angle and it pushes a certain way. Use those types of things that you already know to associate um, new concepts with. When you have to remember things, try and picture them and associate them with a picture or a story. Always put them in context. For example, the four airborne things that I gave you and the five ground-based things. That made those nine things very easy to remember. And especially when you can remember, hey, I've got to remember four in the air and five on the ground. We're chunking it down. Okay? And give them a story to assist your memory. So I hope that's helped. Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass in half the time. Please give us a share or like and it's the only way we can let YouTube, Facebook, and all those know that this is valuable comment, uh, content worth sharing. And if you love this, you know, head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com where we have a bunch of free and paid membership um, practice exams that will really help you pass your pilot exams in half the time.